I want to share with you a new infographic that I've put together that deals specifically with, with students and how they can directly use AI on their own without violating academic integrity. So as I share this with you, keep in mind all of the different things that go on as far as students' interactions, students wanting to be ready for a test and to properly learn the material. The idea here is that with this infographic, we'll be providing them with some specific things that they can do to use AI, but to use it effectively as well as uh, properly. I'm going to reveal this infographic to you step by step so that you can see the different components as I, as I build it up and try to understand how this would help and benefit students in their use of AI. So the first one here deals with making sure that students know that they need to ensure and follow the school's policy on the use of AI. They need to check the school's website, as well as maybe a school student handout, student, student handbook, that is. And then if they still have questions, they could always go to the library and that they should be that, that good direct resource that they can go to as far as knowing acceptable use of technology. Now, this definitely then necessitates that we have these policies in place that the university, the high school, the elementary school, whatever the educational institution is, has these put together. So that's gonna be an important aspect. Secondly, the message needs to be that they ensure that they are also following the actual instructions, the actual specific guidance given by that specific instructor, because Different instructors might be using AI differently, might be allowing different types of usage. So they need to be sure that they're following that instructor's policy. And so that once again, necessitates that we as instructors properly give them clear guidance. So this should be definitely spelled out in the syllabus as well as even assignment instructions and maybe even in the rubric. The big thing is that students should, should ask whenever they have any doubts or they're not sure. And then finally, students need to do this. Students need to ask themselves if using the technology is helping them to understand the topic or simply doing the assignment for them. So if it's just doing it for them, that's very problematic because that negates the actual learning process that needs to occur within them. So this is an important question that they should be asking themselves. The very first thing is for sure that they have basic AI literacy. So hopefully within your course, you already had a discussion about some of the main aspects of AI literacy, such as an awareness that AI is now all around us and is affecting society in many different ways. Also, this building up of capability and knowing how to use it properly and effectively. Knowledge that anyone can use it, whether it's the instructor or the student, as well as businesses and any other organization. And then finally, critical thinking, which is super, super important and is something that needs to be pushed always in order to ensure that they are properly and critically analyzing whatever response the AI gives them, as well as ensuring proper ethics and uh, ensuring that they understand that hallucinations could always occur. So they need to be aware of that so that they can use it properly. From here, this infographic provides direct prompt examples to help students in properly using the AI to the maximum advantage. So the first prompt here deals with summarizing information. It states, please act as an expert article reviewer and summarize the article that I will provide. Be sure to give me the name of the article, the author, the date, the key point of the article, along with its main points and conclusion. Do you understand? This is a more advanced prompt as opposed to simply summarize this article. If you say summarize this article, it will summarize it for you, but it won't be as effective as opposed to giving it this more direct prompt that's more advanced and has more information in it as far as giving us a better summary. So that's important as well in order to be that much more effective in the way that we're using AI. Now that you see this little disclaimer here, which is important for the student to understand also, which is don't abuse this ability. Some texts need to be fully read to gain deep understanding. Again, that's a key thing. So they need additional guidance in that regard from the instructor. The next one here deals with preparing for actual classroom discussions. So here we use the prompt to create a scenario. This prompt says, 
please act as a professor in a university professional communication course. Have a discussion with me by asking questions one at a time on a topic of teamwork. Ask about why it is important, how to build a team, how to avoid conflict in a team, and other similar aspects of teamwork. Do not answer for me. Let me give my response, give feedback on my response, and then continue with the back and forth conversation. So it's important to know that, again, this is a more advanced and more useful type of prompt because this now helps us to have an actual conversation, an actual discussion that will then prepare that student for the actual discussion in the classroom. This could lower their anxiety by being more prepared for the actual class. So this is really beneficial, but again, it's an advanced prompt. So this is a nice little tool for the student to use. And again, this can be modified to whatever grade level or topic that the student needs. This next one deals with studying for a test. So the prompt here is act as a biology professor and help me study the topic of photosynthesis. Ask a question that would be likely to show up on a test about this topic. Ask me different types of questions, such as true, false, multiple choice, and short answer. Ask me one question at a time, and then let me answer before asking me another question. Ask me a total of 10 questions and then grade my response and give me feedback on what I still need to study. This is another powerful prompt because it organizes it in a nice way that helps the student study effectively. Again, by giving them something that's more realistic to what they might face on that test, breaking it down into different types of questions, and then providing them really good feedback afterwards after they go through this test. So again, this can be modified uh, by the topic that they need. And again, they can uh, adjust the, the, the level and the, the overall um, formation of the types of questions as well. It deals with help in learning. So the prompt would be act as a philosophy professor and explain Plato's allegory of the cave, but do it at a high school level instead of a college level. Be sure to provide lots of different examples to make it easier for me to understand. This is very powerful as well because you see there's several things going on here. One is that I'm telling it to adjust the level, even though I need information from, from the viewpoint of a philosophy professor all right, on this topic. I'm asking it to be presented at a high school level. Why? Because the scenario here or the idea would be that the student had a class, had a college level class, but the, the information presented was too complicated. So now I can ask the AI to adjust that level to present it to me at a lower level so that I can properly understand and then I can adjust it again and say, okay, now give it to me at a higher level, such as a, a university level. So again, the student is able to personalize how they're getting that information at the level that they need. And again, this can be adjusted to whatever topic, whatever type of class uh, in order to suit that student. And the final prompt that we have here is writing feedback. So the prompt goes, act as a university writing tutor and provide a usable feedback on how to improve writing composition. Use your rhetorical knowledge on effective writing techniques to suggest specific ways to best express thoughts and ideas through writing. Do not rewrite the document for me. So that's a really important part there, that last part. Do not rewrite the document for me. So again, the use and the proper implementation of this prompt would help a student to use the power of an AI like ChatGPT without actually violating academic integrity. Notice the limitation that I put in this prompt at the end. I say, did not rewrite this document for me. Because if you just use a simple prompt, then the AI, the chat GPT might very well rewrite the entire document, even in the process of giving you feedback. So by laying it out this way, specifically using a good advanced prompt like this with this limitation, this will definitely help the student use chat GPT or other AI in an effective way while also still maintaining academic integrity. These are just some examples. There's plenty, plenty more. Um, if you go to my website at Silverell Publishing, I have a academic prompt section there that can definitely help with even additional prompts for students as well as for instructors. But there's much more that students can use AI for, of course. There's other uh, great ways to use this ethically, such as help with creating a schedule, a study schedule, and an overall uh, schedule of things going on in their life. AI, such as ChatGPT, is really powerful, really helpful with that type of work as well. 
uh, brainstorming ideas for topics, titles for an assignment. Those are all ethical uses, again, depending on the class, because some instructors might be, no, I want you to come at, up with these things on your own. So again, they need to revert back to these three rules on the left-hand side there. It's important for them to, to think about that first and then think about how they could use AI. Uh, another way is simply to ask questions to better understand. Other ways to use AI are such as role play, translation, language practice, all sorts of different possibilities here. The list goes on and on, only limited by their imagination, but they need to know how to use it properly. The other big thing that needs to be pushed to students is that they need to always critically analyze all AI answers. There's still issues with hallucinations of the AI making up false information, so it needs to be pushed to them. Now, in creating this infographic for students and in releasing this to the internet for them to use, hopefully some of them will look at it, will find it, and will use it. But the thing is that what really needs to happen is that students need you, you as the academic, you as the instructor, you need to help them learn how to use AI effectively and ethically. So this comes back to you specifically as this instructor. That's really our job, right? Is to help them is to make sure that they develop in a way that they will be successful in the future. So that's why it's such an imperative to develop their AI literacy, to help them see how they can use AI but in the proper way, in the ethical way. So through our guidance, through tools such as this infographic, it'll help them come to that capability and be able to really succeed in the future as they use this throughout their lives in academia, as well as in their personal lives and also on the job. So we have a big task ahead of us, but we can definitely do this by working together in our community of inquiry, using tools like this and making sure that we talk to each other and share our ideas so that we can all be successful as this AI continues to develop into the future. And remember, learning is for life.